Alrighty, let's see here. I should be going. Hopefully people can hear me. Um got Mike. Oh do, 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 do. we'll wait a couple seconds here. Uh, da, 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 da. <clears throat> All righty. We... Hmm. Okay. So we should just dive in. Welcome, everyone. I am pa uh, Pastor Aaron Fenker. I'm the Dean of Theology for Higher Things. If you are new with us, um, I, uh, Pastor Borkhart is moving, so you get me, uh, today and on Monday. Yes, I believe that's correct. That's what I'm planning for. So why don't we dive right into the text? We are continuing in John chapter 16. That's where we are. Let me pull that up here. There, there we are. Hopefully this keeps going. I, I updated my operating system today and my Bible app likes to crash. So we will uh, see how that goes for us today. So we are in John 16, 33, uh, where Jesus says, uh, I've said these things to you so that you would have peace in me. In the world, you're going to have tribulation, but take heart. I overcome the world. Um, so Jesus here is um, laying out our source of comfort in a comfortless world. We really do live in a world of, of no comfort. And things right now are even worse than they have been. Right? We've had seven... What month is it? We're in November. So nine months, uh, eight months of a pandemic. And now we've got election that is sort of chaotic afterwards. Um, the lead up was chaotic. Now afterwards it's chaotic. Lots of um, tribulation, lots of suffering in the world. Um, Jesus here just sort of leaves it open-ended. Uh, the, the persecution, I mean, that's in play, obviously, uh, from what Jesus says earlier in the Gospel of John. Um, but here, really, he just leaves it undefined that the world has all sorts of suffering and tribulation. Um, and Paul lays this out in, uh, in Romans... Uh, chapter 8. Um, well, let's see if I can do this here. We'll just do it that way. Let's pull that up quickly to, to read that. Scroll down here. Um, if God is for us, who can be against us? Um, that's kind of where Jesus is at here. Who is to condemn? 8 verse 34. Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. What shall Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, same word, as Jesus uses, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. Jesus sort of lumps it all together under tribulation, but Paul expands on it. Is it going to be like it's written? For your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, Paul says. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. I have overcome. Conquered is the same word, uh, similar word, related word. Through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So that's the 
similar thing that Jesus is talking about right here. And Jesus tells all the things that he does so that we would have peace. But not peace in some sort of like, I feel good about what's going to happen. Or I've got some sort of, you know, resolution that, you know, it's going to be bad, but at least I can sort of stiff upper lip, you know, keep calm, carry on sort of stuff. No, peace in Jesus. He alone is our peace, as Paul says in Ephesians. He's broken down the dividing wall of separation between us and God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, in the world we'll have tribulation and danger and nakedness and sort and all the rest. But we can take heart. We can be comforted. We can be strengthened in, with the knowledge. Well, not the knowledge. We're comforted because Jesus has overcome the world. He, I have conquered the world. Overcome it. Where? In his death and in his resurrection. That's where it's at. That's the peace that passes understanding. Jesus' death and resurrection. We are at peace with God. And uh, we can be at peace with one another. We can be at peace because we're in Jesus. He alone is our peace. Okay? Well, we'll keep rolling here into John chapter 17. When Jesus spoke uh, these things, he... Um, Jesus spoke these things, and lifting up his eyes into heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son would glorify you. Because you have given to me all the, um, authority over all flesh, in order that um, uh, the Son may give uh, eternal life uh, to whomever you have given him. So this is what it's all about now. The hour has come. Oh, we've been waiting for that in John, haven't we? It's not my hour's not yet come. My hour's not yet come. My hour's not yet come. Well, the hour has come. The Son is glorified. He is exalted, lifted up in his death. And in his death. When I am lifted up, exalted, glorified, then I will draw all people to myself. And the Son will glorify the Father. Um, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Today you will be with me in paradise. Or as the Son, uh, that's um, Mark and Luke. But as the Son glorifies the Father, what is he, how does he do that in uh, John's Gospel? Is, um, it is finished. All done, Dad. The Son finishes all the work that He does. Uh, and the Son has authority over all flesh um, to judge. Uh, all judgment has been given to the, Son of, to the Son because He is the Son of Man. So the Son can faithfully judge because it's not that just God is, you know, high above and, and you know, He can judge because He's God. I mean, that's true. And God can judge faithfully because, you know, He's God and we're not. That's true. Um, but really, the, God can faithfully judge here. The Son can because He's God and man. Uh, but not in the way of condemnation. Uh, the Father didn't send His Son to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through Him. And so it is here. All authority over all flesh, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Eternal life in that baptism. Baptism now saves you. Uh, washing of new birth in the Spirit, that you might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. So also in the teaching, teaching them to cherish all I've commanded. Uh, sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. That's, that's coming up here in John 17. Or, um, who, it's in John chapter 8. Whoever has my words will never see death. And if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. So it's all here. It's all coming together. 
All the threads in Jesus' preaching are coming together. And so what's eternal life? Uh, that they know you, uh, the only true God, and the, Him whom you've sent, Jesus Christ. Um, I have glorified you upon the earth, uh, uh, finishing the work which you have given me to do. So here we have Jesus' is, is finishing language is already starting. Accomplished, um, it's the same word, uh, teleao, uh, tetelestai, related word. This is the, um, uh, yeah, just a related word. Um, so Jesus is finishing it all up. Whatever the Father has given him, Jesus is finish. Jesus finishes. Um, as a, since, uh, what is the hymn? A lamb goes uncomplaining forth. Um, this would be stanza two or three. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, Father, most willingly, I'll do what you command me. My will conforms to your decree. I'll do what you have asked me. Um, that's the, that's the same thing here. Um, and now glorify, uh, now you, O Father, glorify me. Um, in, uh, at your side, in, with the glory which uh, I had with you um, before the world was. Mm. So here Jesus claims to be the eternal Son. Jesus, uh, the Son was always Son, the Father was always Father, and yet the Son and the Father are not the same. Hmm. I have revealed your name to the men whom you have given to me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them uh, to me, and they cherish, guard your word. They have cherished it. They cherish the word by cherishing Jesus. Um so Jesus is the revelation of the Father. That's the, that's the thing that we always need to realize. And this has come up time and again in the Gospel of John. Um, have I been with you so long, Philip, that you do not know me? And so whenever we talk about God, we, we, we start with Jesus. Jesus is how we know not only who God is, in some sort of i got to have the true God sort of sense, but Jesus reveals his name, and the name of God, well, it's what the Lord proclaims to Moses on Sinai. Show me your glory. I can't show you my glory, um, but I'll pass by you, is what uh, the Lord says to Moses. And he does this by proclaiming the name of the Lord. And Moses heard, Yahweh, Yahweh a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. That's the name of God. So the name of God is how, not just, you know, how we call him, you know, true God versus false God. God's name is a revelation of what he does, who he is towards you. And that's the name that Jesus reveals. So, I have revealed, manifested your name the way you are towards men whom he has given to, to, you, to me out of the world. Um, so Jesus always reveals not just who God is, but what God does for you. He reveals to you the heart of God. What the Father's heart is towards you that he would give up his son for you. Jesus manifests also the son's heart, that he would, um, so that the world would know that I love the Father, I do these things. Or, um, 
or uh, the sun shows you his heart and that well as we'll see his heart is even pierced um right now they know that everything which you have given to me is from you because the mm, for um I have for the words, the the preachings, the speakings which you have given to me, I have given to them. And they receive and they know truly that I have come from you. And they believe that you have sent me. So Jesus speaks and we listen. My sheep hear my voice. Whatever Jesus says, that's what go that's what goes. Um, and when you receive Jesus' words, then we know that Jesus is from the Father. I and the Father are one. Um, or as it has it in Matthew, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Um, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And um, some churches read that. Uh -huh. Some churches would read this in a restrictive way, I see. Um, uh, let's back up to that verse before we. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Um, we can try and restrict this. I mean, this is the high priestly prayer. So, um, the manifestation of God also occurs um, to those not in the upper room or to those not part of the twelve. And we see this f earlier in the Gospel of John. Um, when Jesus is talking to the religious leaders is... Um, he's manifested God's name to them too. Um, believe, uh, what, for what work do you stone me? Believe me on account of the works. He does this uh, continually. Uh, there's things that bear witness to Jesus of who he is. And in John 5, he lays that out for the religious leaders. Um, you search the scriptures, but they manifest, they, they testify of me. The scriptures do. Um, also the works that I do. Um, the Father's works in me testify of who I am and who He is. So He does this um, uh, for all people. And, and this should make sense um, when it comes to how Jesus reveals Himself and what He reveals about God because for God so loved the world, the whole world, and Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. Um, full stop. Um, I guess if we want to use the dogmatic terms within the Lutheran Church, um, that would be the objective revelation of God, the objective justification, as, as it's the, which is the dogmatic term, that the whole world is justified in the death and resurrection of Jesus. He pays for all sins. There is a not guilty verdict for the whole world. And he, um, I don't want to use but. I don't want to negate that. And yet, uh, there is, I guess the dogmatic term is subjective justification. That is, what Jesus objectively does for the whole world is received by each through faith. And so if we were to compare John 5, uh, where Jesus manifests himself and God's heart to the world, um, religious leaders, unbelievers, and believers, disciples alike, um, is also subjectively done um, with to those who are uh, believers. Um, I hope that's helpful, Nathan. Um, where we have this, we don't want to restrict Jesus' um, dying and rising. Uh, for them. Christ died and rose for all, and he manifests his name to all in his death and resurrection, but also uh, 
uh, in a way of comfort um, to us who cling to his word, who cherish Jesus. Um, and that's, that's also an aspect here in the upper room, the whole upper room discourse is one of comfort to those who do cling to Jesus. And it's the same way here in the high priestly prayer. That Jesus here is praying, um, well, for you, for me, uh, for the twelve, for the eleven, for, yeah. Uh, verse 8, the words, um, the preachings, uh, yeah, we're there. Okay. I am asking for their sake. Um, I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Um, so here again, um, Jesus is praying for uh, those who are his. I mean, that's not to say, that's not to the... Um, Hmm. This again is not the dying and rising. This is this is a different aspect of what Jesus does. Um, the dying and rising is for all. The world. Um, the blood of Jesus. Um, oh, what is it in John? First John. Uh, not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. John is very clear about that in his first epistle. Um, but here the praying. Well, that's... Um, hmm. We don't want to suddenly say, because Jesus prays for Peter, means he only dies for Peter. Uh, if we're going to use an example from Luke. Um, or the fact that um, the Spirit prays for the saints according to the will of God, but that doesn't mean that the Spirit doesn't want all to come to faith, doesn't want to work faith in all people. So we don't want to like, we don't want to try and limit it all of a sudden. Um, I mean, it's particular. There's gifts being given here, comfort to be given for the apostles and for you and me, as we'll see here in just a minute. Uh, all mine are yours and yours are mine and I am glorified in them. So here we see the union of Father and Son in saving you. I'm no longer in the world. Oh, yeah. Okay. I am. They are in the world. So Jesus is clearly already um, viewing himself in terms of his death and resurrection. Holy Father, keep them in your name which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. Hmm. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Right, so God says what's going to happen, and so it, it has to happen. It's either, we're not trying to get into uh, uh, God marshalling people uh, into different boxes. That's not good. That will end only in despair. That will end only in judgment. And in a God who is not tender in his mercy towards you, uh, but could hold out some sort of uh, destruction for you. Um, but now I am coming to you, Jesus says, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have joy in them. Uh, my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them your world, word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Um, so here we have world and Jesus sort of set in, in opposition to one another. Uh... Do not ask for them to be taken out of the world, but you would keep them from the evil one. So here we start seeing that keeping is not doing or obedience. Um, the same word means, it means both guarding them from the evil one. 
And here it is. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And here we see, um, as you sent me into the world, and I was, uh, I have sent them into the world. Ah, uh, anticipating e uh, post Easter here. Um, and for their sake, I sanctify myself in order that they would be sanctified uh, in truth, or truly sanctified. Hmm. Jesus, Jesus makes himself holy so that you would be truly holy. And he delivers this holiness to you um, in the Word. Because the Word delivers the Word. The Word delivers Jesus. Um, the Scriptures do. Uh, they are all about him. Um, uh, his baptism does it, uh, delivers holiness to you. Uh, his absolution does, uh, that's post-Easter, where Jesus does send his um, apostles out in order to forgive sins. Um, uh, the word of the supper sanctifies you. Uh, Jesus' body and blood for you for the forgiveness of your sins. I do not ask for them only, but also for those who will believe in me uh, through their word. Yes. So Jesus prays here for you. So all these, these prayers about um, the cherishing of the word and and being kept holy isn't just for the apostles. Jesus prays for us. This beautiful prayer. And do we believe that Jesus prays it for us? We don't. We're like, oh, this is a beautiful prayer that Jesus prays back then sometime. And that's true, he did back then. And it's for those around them. But no, here we see this great comfort that when Jesus is being about to be betrayed, Jesus is about to go to his cross, to his suffering. You and I are on Jesus' mind. That all of believers in him, all of his sheep, that Jesus is praying for us. That of, you know, we make a big deal of Jesus' last will and testament being the supper of his body and blood for us. And cherish that because of all the things that he could do, he, he establishes that for us. Our comfort in the midst of our sins and affliction and all, the, all that stuff. And that's true. That's great. Yes, fantastic. No, that's, that's, that's true. But here we see in the Gospel of John, the last thing Jesus does for your benefit and my benefit is to pray for us, that we would be holy, sanctified, without blemish, that we would have his word, that we would believe in him. And our, that this is our parting comfort today because I'm out of time. But we'll take heart there. That Jesus prays this for us. He prays that we would believe in him. That we would be saved. And our comfort is, when Jesus prays for something like that, it's going to happen. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you back on Monday. Peace be with you.